In this video, I'll show you how to save each player's data so when they rejoin the game, they spawn back on the same stage they started with. To do this, we'll use Roblox's data store service. Let's create a script in server script service and rename it to data store. Before we start coding, let's enable studio access to API services. Let's go to home, game settings, security, and we want to find enable studio access to API services. Enable it and click save. This will allow us to communicate with the data store service. It's very important you do enable this. If you do not enable it, uh, data store will not work in your game. Next, let's open up our data store script and start coding. I'm going to remove the print hello world. And I'm going to start by getting this data store service. So data store service equals game colon get service data store service. Next, we need to create a new data store. To do this, we'll say data store equals data store service colon get data store and in here you want to put your data store name I'm going to call it data store name zero changing this name will actually create a new save for the player if you want to reset the player's data um, increase it by one or two or three uh, if you want to go back to an old uh, set of data just change the change the name to the old name so let's say I have data stored and data store name zero uh, I've got 50 points on this data store and then we change to data store one. I've now got zero points. And let's say uh, I then go and get 75 points and that saves. So now on data store one, I have 75 points. And if we go back to zero, I'll have 50 again. We could set a two and we'll have zero again. Uh, zero, we have 50. One, we have 75, if that makes sense. Now let's call a function whenever the player joins the game. You should know how to do this by now. Game.players.player added colon connect function player. Now let's create a data variable that will hold all of our saved data. So we'll say local data equals nil. We don't want to assign it to anything yet because we don't have any data at the minute to save. Or that is stored, sorry. Any data that's stored at the minute. Now what we're going to do is use a pcall. I'll explain what that is in a second. So we'll say local success comma error message equals pcall function. And then in the function we want to say data equals data store colon get a sync player dot user ID so uh, p call is a special way to call code uh, but catch any errors to prevent the script from uh, crashing or not behaving properly so we are assigning two variables to this function so this function has two returns so we have an, a success and an error message success is a boolean variable so if uh, this code is ran successfully without any errors success will be true if there is an error we're going to set the error message it will provide an error message we're going to set that to the variable error message and then in this code we are getting the saved data that is assigned to the player's user id we always assign and get data from the player's user id and not the name because if the player changed their username we won't be able to uh, access their data anymore because it'll be stored on an old username. So we always use their player ID because it's constant, it's static, it doesn't change. Next we'll say if success and data then. So if the pcall was successful and data does exist, data exists within the player that has been saved before. We'll say player.leaderstats.stage.value equals data and in square brackets 1. So this will set the stage value to the saved value in position one of the data away. We don't want position zero. We want we want the second element at position one. When you're getting the data store, the uh, all the data, all the actual saved va data values, the keys are all stored uh, from index one and above. If you had multiple saved values, it'd be the exact same. Just on this line, you would set the leader stats or data to data two. So for example. Let's say we had something called money. On on the second line would have money dot value equals data two, and you see what I mean there. It just keeps going on. Next, I'm going to drop down and say else just before this end. And if data doesn't exist and that the, the, or the message wasn't successful, we are going to print the player does not have any saved data. Just so we know, this is just for us to know when we testing the game whether or not the player has data and that's it this is all the code to retrieve to load data easy next I'm going to create a save data function and we're going to call this to save the data but I'm going to make it an, a separate function so I'm not going to call it when a player joins specifically like directly sorry 
I'm going to make it its own function first. And the reason for that is because we're going to call it twice when the player leaves and when the server shuts down. More on that a bit later though. So for now, I'll call it save data equals function. And we want to pass in the player into this function. Now let's create a save table. This is going to be a table of all the content, all the save values that we want to save. So I'll say local save table equals, and then I want to open these curly braces, drop down, and the first value I'll save, the only value is player.leaderstats.stage.value. And this is just the player, this is just the stage we want to save. Say you were saving, back to my example earlier, let's say we had money as well. Let's say we had four things, okay? So we have uh, money, actually I'll just do dot dot dot, and then we've got, so we've got n items, final value. Okay, so if we're saving an n number of items here, okay, or we're, we're loading n number of items. If we want to save n number of items, then we would do, we'll put a semicolon at the end, and then we'd say player.leaderstats.money.value, then a semicolon, do this for as many as you want, and in the last item, the nth item, which in our case is final value dot value, we wouldn't put a semicolon on the end of this one. The last value doesn't have a semicolon. Okay, now we're going to do another P call. So what I'm going to do is just for the sake of saving effort, I'm going to copy the one we've made up here and paste it into our save data function. So local success error message. And in here, we're not going to actually call a function. We're going to inside this P call, put in data store dot set a sync not colon but dot comma data store comma player dot user id comma save table so this will save the player's data here this p call well it will attempt to save the data obviously the p call attempts code if it doesn't work it throws the error or captures the error but let's assume it is successful what it will do is it will save the player's data using the set a sync method that is part of the data store service. And this set a sync will take in the player's user ID and the save data as an argument. So this is just a way of writing it all on one line. Next we'll say if success, then we can print uh, the data was saved successfully. Otherwise, if it wasn't successful, we'll print data was not saved. Now to actually call this save data function, you'll see why I've made this a separate function now. We want to call it when the player leaves the game. So game.players.player removing. I'm not sure if we've seen this one in this uh, little series yet, but player removing, uh, again, colon connect function, passing in the player. Exact same as player added. It's just this is called whenever the player leaves the game. So player added whenever the player joins, player removing when the player leaves. And all we need to do in here is call save data and pass in our player. And one more, we'll say game colon bind to close. In brackets, function. And the function we want to call is going to loop for each player. So I'm going to say for underscore comma player in i pairs game dot players dot uh, colon get players. Do task dot spawn save data passing in the player now what this does uh, bind to close is a function so this function is called whenever the server shut down because if the server shut down uh, all the players are removed but it won't necessarily it might not call our data so we want to make sure we are calling the data if the server shuts down in which case we'll loop through each player so I'm just using underscore normally you might see for I comma V in pairs or in I pairs um, but I'm using underscore because we don't need the index so there's no point i mean i could say i un, uh, i comma player but i'm just going to use underscore because it means nothing to so we're not using it player that's the object so this is going to be a player object because we're looping through each player in the game and for each player we're going to call the save data function without stopping the rest of the script that's sort of what task.spawn does as a basic idea it'll call that function um without disrupting the flow of the script if that makes sense now let's test it so let's uh, go back to test make sure remember we, you've adjusted your game settings now i'll go to let me mute this i'll go to stage two i'll just stop the game and you know what i'm going to join back data was saved successfully i'm going to join back and oh look we're back on stage two perfect i'm just going to mute it again 
Now let's get to stage three and actually let's skip a stage because I can't be bothered to do that one. Get to stage four and let's die. Just make sure we spawn back onto stage four. There we go, we do. Progress bar went a bit iffy there, but it's back to normal. Uh, again, if if you don't want that, if you just want it to always be normal, remove that weight one we talked about in the progress bar video. Uh, and just, just make it weight. Get rid of the one. Now if we stop it and play again, we should be on stage four. Perfect. So that's it for this video, everyone. In the next video, we'll look at making a game pass that skips the player to the end of the obby. This was suggested by the user you can see on screen now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.